Good to see you back here at ITV Berlin now 2021. Thanks for joining us again. Yes, I'm very excited to see and to read, of course, all your posts with the hashtag, hashtag ITV Berlin. Please tag us along at ITV Berlin on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Instagram, Twitter, and so on the social media. Firework is there for you. Let's switch now into a new thematic track. Let's dive into the best practice responsible tourism. And of course, you are again in good hands of the next track moderator with me now in the studio is the Commissioner Corporate Social Responsibility at ITB Berlin. Please welcome, this is a digital applause for you, Rika Jean-Francois. Thank you, okay, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm very happy to moderate today the Responsible Tourism track, Best Practices of Responsible Tourism. And yeah, you have all seen the program, so we will just dive into it. The first session will be with the International Trade Center, ITC, a good partner of ITB, and with the ladies from She Trades. And the panel is called Women in Tourism, Building, Bet Building Back Better. So please. Good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to the panel discussion today at ITB Now. My name is uh, Phyllis Monkey, and I'm the National Coordinator for the She Trades in the Commonwealth Project in Kenya. I'm honored to facilitate the session today where we'll be talking about women in tourism building back better. And I have a few questions for you just to set the scene. When was the last time you put your feet in the ocean bed and enjoyed the sand going through your toes? That sounds just wonderful, surreal, you know? When was the last time you enjoyed a game drive watching some of nature's most intriguing creatures? For most of us, it's been a while, I'd say almost a year. 2020 will definitely go down in history as the year of the pandemic, the year that tourism as we knew it changed. So if tourism is changing, we must, we must ensure that it's changing for the better. As travelers, as service providers, as international organizations supporting the recovery of this sector that maintains the livelihood of billions across the, across the globe, how can we adjust our strategies? How can we make the best of the emerging opportunities in the tourism sector? A lot has been said about tourism sector in the past, you know, the entire 2020, because we know it was the hardest hit. Everyone was hit, but it was the hardest hit, especially in the beginning. It came to a halt and is slowly, slowly recovering. Seems to be almost the slowest sector to recover. But recovering, it will. But as we start, please help me welcome the CSR Commissioner of ITB Berlin, Ms. Rika Jean-Francois. Rika, please take it away. I'm very pleased to be here, and you can be sure that I would really love to, to go to Kenya right at the very moment and enjoy the ocean and everything. Well, we will do it, I'm sure. So yesterday, we, we all celebrated the International Women's Day, and it's my pleasure to send a warm welcome, especially to all the wonderful women out there who follow us today. So welcome to our first all virtual ITB now. Um, I want to thank every one of you really distinguished ladies for organizing and taking part in such an important panel discussion as this. Um, there might not be the big companies, but it's very important that tourism can be used as a tool to empower people in all destinations of this planet. So ITC, meanwhile, has become an estimated partner of ITB, and I really appreciate the work that She Trades is doing. So you provide really a, a wonderful, efficient network for women-owned businesses, I think already in 25 countries. So it's not only Kenya, it's everywhere. That's really a real good network. Um, and especially in these difficult times we are all facing, as Phyllis said, it's so important to, to give continuous support and to stay connected. And that's what we're doing today. So She Trades does more than allow you to talk about business. She Trades helps you to do business. And this model applies even now. Um, so for instance, e-learning can equip women entrepreneurs with knowledge and skills. Um, to get back to business after the pandemic. Diversification of skills and flexibility are necessary to create new sources of income. And the pandemic once again showed us, I think, that how important it is that tourism is no monoculture, but a supplemental income. So 
especially women, independent from where you live and of all cultural backgrounds, have always shown resilience since centuries. So they restart, they restart, they do things, and they restart even better. So it must be an imperative now to rebuild sustainability. As we all know that if we continue to, to ignore climate change and believe in unlimited growth, new disasters will be unavoidable. So we must rebuild responsibly, taking into account human rights, embracing respect, equality, and diversity. So I'm looking forward really to an enthralling discussion and wish you all the very best. Thank you. International organizations have a role to play in helping women in tourism build back better. To provide perspective of what they can do, please help me welcome the Executive Director at International Trade Center, Ms. Pamela Cook Hamilton. Ms. Pamela. Thank you so much, Phyllis. I'm delighted that the International Trade Center has once again been given the opportunity to mark International Women's Day together with ITB Berlin. This has already become a treasured tradition. I'd like to thank our hosts and the speakers before me, three inspirational women in business and a policymaker who are all contributing to a greener and fairer future of tourism. The International Trade Center's International Women's Day slogan this year is Women Lead Small Business Recovery. Small and medium-sized enterprises account for the large majority of firms in tourism, and they're also the hardest hit by the pandemic. Women make up 54% of employment in tourism as opposed to 39% in the broader economy. An ITC survey on COVID impact among businesses in 136 countries has shown that nearly 62% of women-led small businesses have been strongly affected by the crisis. Women and women-owned businesses are disproportionately affected by the collapse of tourism and need our full support. Today's topic is very close to my heart. I am from the Caribbean, Jamaica to be specific. Of the 20 most tourism dependent small economies in the world, 13 are in the Caribbean. In six Caribbean states, tourism accounts for about half of gross domestic product. In some countries, this figure goes up to 70% or more. Women also represent almost 62% of employment in the accommodation and food service activities in the Caribbean. So the collapse or near collapse of tourism is a devastating blow to small economies. I'm pleased that the international community has mobilized funds through international financial institutions to counteract the economic crisis in these vulnerable countries. And the International Trade Center is ramping up its offerings to provide technical assistance to governments, business support organizations, and small businesses. It's vital to help micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises in tourism weather COVID-19, as they're key to a faster economic recovery and job creation post-crisis, especially considering the knock-on effects of developments in the tourism sector on other sectors with a prevalence of women, such as agribusiness. The United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, UNCTAD, estimates that for every $1 million lost in international tourism revenue, a country's national income could decline by two to three million dollars in total. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much for that. Very, very articulate and also really uh, putting in perspective just uh, the importance of tourism around the globe. We also want to look into the perspective of government. As we know, government largely looks at the macro level and creates an enabling environment for businesses to thrive. The question we want to ask today is uh, right now is how does the Ministry of Tourism promote sustainable tourism within the overall tourism strategy? And to answer this, we have the Director General of Tourism Policy and Coordination Department at the Ministry, uh, at the Ministry of Environment and Tourism in Mongolia. Her Excellency, Ms. Bayaskalan Saranjav. Please share with us. Thank you. This is actually a very important question for us, for whole uh, tourism industry during this pandemic. After this recovery of tourism industry, we should be more inclusive, more sustainable development is uh, uh, need to be focused. So uh, the government of Mongolia, uh, uh, the development policies, all of the policies and the strategical uh, 
papers, they include uh, tourism should be developed in the sustainable way, which is including the environmental friendly as well as community based, more inclusive tourism in the uh, balanced way, which more like uh, one side, it's from economic development is important. From other side, it's very important to sustain the uh, environmental uh, environment side. It's very important as to decrease the pollution, which is caused by tourism movements in the countryside area. Mongolia, you know, it's a uh, landlocked country. And then uh, we are, is, uh, the Mongolia landscape is quite large, 17th largest country in the world. So as a, a natural side, it's very important for us to uh, sustain this nature in the long term to attract more tourists, to develop more tourism. So it's very important us to um, sustain this nature. So it's um, all of the tourism policies we are more focused on to environmental friendly tourism to develop it and as well as to develop tourism as a more inclusive, more like community based. Okay. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for that. And my next question to you as we close out this section is, what type of support is provided to women entrepreneurs working in the tourism sector in Mongolia? Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, uh, same with the other uh, regions of the world, um, uh, most of the, like more than 50% of the workforce are women led in Mongolia as well. So um, it's providing more uh, job opportunity in the tourism industry is very important, as well as like providing more financial support them to start uh, entrepreneurship or like um, small businesses in the tourism uh, industry is very important. So Mongolia uh, at the moment, we are uh, giving some some soft loan for the women entrepreneurship entrepreneurs to the start uh, startup businesses. Uh, so this um, project is funded by uh, Asian Development Bank, and then also we are also opening some women-led markets in the uh, provincial areas, like most of the destinations they people go there, and then we when we open there like women-led markets, then women can have job places to sell their products, as well as they can get the soft loans to run a business. So from uh, two of them, it's very important, as well as we are providing some capacity building programs for them. This, uh, during this pandemic, uh, providing some Digital skills for the women is getting very important as well. So now we are cooperating with the, some technology companies to connect these women-led businesses to the digital platforms to uh, promote their businesses as well as to get the online bookings. So uh, those are uh, getting like very important uh, for the women uh, in the tourism industry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. It's quite impressive what the Mongolian government is doing from soft loans to capacity building to just support the women entrepreneurs in tourism. Thank you so much. We are really proudly associated and congratulations to the Mongolian government. Thank you. Thank you. I'm now going to introduce the women that I have on my panel today. Uh, we have Na Oye Ofei is the general manager of Sunset African Tours in Ghana. She holds a diploma in journalism and certificate in public relations. She has worked in the travel industry since 1994, which is quite a while. A lot of experience she brings on board. Also served as the general secretary of Tuga, which is uh, one of the business uh, support associations in Ghana from 2008 all the way to 2012. In 2014, Na and her uh, colleague, and her partner uh, established the company Sunset Africa Tours and now focuses on marketing, 
client management, and daily operations. She's passionate about travel and loves road trips, especially. She has traveled extensively within Western Africa and her vast knowledge in the history and culture of the people of West Africa helps in providing her clients a culturally unique and exciting travel experience. Now, it's really great to have you here. Please wave a hand at us and- Okay, I'm happy to be here too. Thank you. And next up, we have Ms. Angela Njehia, who is based in Kenya. Uh, she's the director of Tiaranjani Africa, which is a tourism consultancy business, which aims to develop sustainable, inclusive models and contribute to the Sustainable Development Goals SDGs. Angela has over 12 years experience in the tourism industry and is actively involved in product development, in sales and marketing, and is passionate about sustainable tourism. Wow, we are really looking forward to hear about sustainability because that's a key, another key buzzword in this season. Sustainable tourism for development. And she strongly believes that sustainability can be achieved through social inclusivity and environmental consciousness. Angela, please do say hello. Thanks, Phyllis. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to move over to my first question to both Na and Angela. Feel free to both answer this question. So we know the tourism industry is really what women naturally gravitate to. It's hospitality, it's service, it's almost natural for women. As a matter of fact, some statistics, you know, let me read out some statistics for you. 2018, tourism was supporting 24.3 million African jobs. This is a study from a study by ITC. SMEs dominate African tourism landscape which presents, uh, which uh, currently comprises 80% women in its workforce, also another ITC study. Women earn 15% less than men to 17%, you know, 15 to 17% less than men in the broader economy, okay? And, you know, gender gaps in wages still exist. Now, there's a lot we could say, but we want to hear from you. Now, you're a woman-owned business in this industry. Angela, as an expert, what role do you see women playing in tourism? And we'll start off with you now. From your perspective, what role do you see women in tourism? What's their role, especially in this season? Now, please go for it. Um, I believe uh, women um, play a very important role. First of all, working in tourism can be a flexible because you could work from anywhere. So you could be a nursing mother and work from home. You could be, um, like, let's say, I wouldn't call a housewife or anything, but you could work from anywhere because what you need is um, the internet and then support for your work. And uh, it, what happens is, it's, it, it really, um, what, what's the word that I'm looking for? Um, what you need is great services on the ground. So you can have, you can even be working in front of your dining hall table. But if you are giving people great services, transportation, you're on time, hotel, you book the best, uh, excursions, you are giving them the best, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, cultural community, you are giving them the best. It doesn't matter where you are working from, whether it's from an office or from your dining table. And that's the thing I love about tourism. And that's the thing that actually makes it flexible for women to play a great role in, uh, in tourism. Thank you so much now for that. On seeing that, I have picked up that the fact that tourism brings in flexibility is, is very attractive for women to really yes. gravitate towards that industry. Thank you so much for that. Angela, over to you. From your perspective as a facilitator, a coach, an advisor, an expert, please share with us, what do you see is the role of women in tourism, especially in this season? I like that you pose that question, Phyllis, because being a woman who's worked in that industry, I know that what it comes with, yeah? For me, I've always said tourism did not just become a job, it became Angela, yeah? So we are able to sync it and make it as one. And allow me to share my screen and um, share with you why I, I feel that, you know, 
women, when we talk about sustainability, we talk about women, we talk about um, the ability of them being the, you know, the shakers, the game changers in tourism, yeah? You called it out nicely and you said 80% actually are actively involved in um, tourism, yeah? So when we look at the figures, yeah? When we're talking about the figures, we say 54% of people employed in tourism are women. And out of this, the women earn less, yeah? Yet they account for a very big number, more than 50%. So when we talk about the role of women, we're saying that 50% of what runs through in tourism operations, tourism activities would not be possible without that 54%, yeah? So you realize that they contribute to a bigger chunk of what we, um, we, we, we consider as tourism operations, yeah? So without that force, yeah? You know, you need the person, the human touch in tourism, yeah? It's not just about the attractions. I sit in Nairobi, but Masai Mara wouldn't be Masai Mara if the people didn't exist, yeah? So if you went to these places and there were no people to serve you, this 54%, that we are talking about then, it wouldn't be an experience. And when you go further, you, you know, like you said it, women in Africa make up 58% of the continent's self-employed population. Now taking what Nas said, yeah, it's easy for us to sink in. And that is why it's easy for us to become entrepreneurs in tourism, yeah? Because it allows that flexibility. Yeah, and it means that with what happened, you know, with the pandemic, yeah, we're now staring at a loss of employment of this 54%. We are staring at a loss for the 58% of these entrepreneurs, yeah? So that means a big chunk will go down. Then if we are to look at, um, in terms of sustainable development or the SDGs, and we ask, how do they relate to women? Number one, we are just talking about flexibility, which for me also recreates what? Employment, yeah? So we'll be meeting SDG number eight in terms of decent, decent work. We are always talking about empowering the women. Yeah, SDG number five is met with, you know, women in tourism. Yeah, and we can also look at SDG number one in terms of poverty, yeah. Speaking from an African point of view, women run the world, yeah. So when we talk about fighting poverty, again, the woman is in the middle of that, yeah. And also in terms of tourism, um, education, yeah, social um, amenities such as interaction with people, customer service. So again, SDG four, directly relates to women in tourism. And when we talk about SDGs towards tourism, yeah, now we know that three specific um, SDGs were uh, directly linked into tourism, and that is decent work, um, responsible consumption and production, and life below, below water, obviously, because of the um, coastal tourism is usually the biggest um, segment in tourism. So when we ask how women contribute, I think number one is that their role, we all have a responsibility of practicing exclusive inclusivity. And why I want to talk about exclusive inclusivity is because often we talk about inclusivity, but it's like, you know, that stepchild on the side, yeah? We're not practicing it fully. Then again, we must seek to amplify value. We know that there's this 54% of women there. We know that these women have the capability to actually uh, impact lives and livelihoods of where they come and we will be meeting all these other SDGs. So obviously, which leads me to my last step in regards to tourism being an agent of transformation. Women are able to move in and just borrowing back to Nas words, yeah, that flexibility allows us to 
you know, empower um, economic development or rather work through economic development as well as develop better livelihoods for our people. So when you look at the pros of why women should be in tourism, their role, it is so huge that it is, you know, that 54% speaks wide. It's more than half. Over to you, Phyllis. Oh, more than half. That's what I'm leave, taking a, a, away, you know, actually more than half. 4% yeah. more than half, which is why we do what we do, which is why we are passionate, that we want to bring the entire, you know, a body of humanity to really experience what is uh, at hand. Um, thank you. I really picked up the word exclusive inclusivity, and I like that. And I hope you can speak more into that a little later. But for now, uh, let me move over back to Na and ask Na. Now, you're, you know, classic at ITC, uh, at She Trades, we believe we don't just talk about 54%. We don't just talk about the, you know, the impact of COVID. We, we see the women-owned businesses. We talk to them. Every st statistic to us is a face is a reality on the ground. And having the really blessed opportunity of working with different women-owned businesses in the countries that we're working in is you know, really engaging with the content on the ground. What's the reality on the ground? So now I'd like you to speak to us as a woman-owned business in Ghana. You know, the pandemic happened. COVID has become almost like a byword. What was the impact on your business? But also free, feel free to share with us some of the creative ways in which your business has, you know, really taken an, a different angle. But yes, do talk about the challenges, but also let's see what are some of the creative solutions that have come up because of this situation. Somebody said that, you know, it's, uh, you should not let a, a crisis go down. You know, always make sure you make use of that crisis. Easier said than done. So please tell yes. us, how did you do it? Yes. Um, first of all, let me start with the challenges. Uh, the challenges when uh, the pandemic started, that was in March and uh, there was a lockdown, the airports was closed. So naturally people's stores, people canceled their tours that they had booked. The first challenge was doing the refunds. And uh, no matter what your terms and conditions were, this was not their fault. You couldn't bear the cost of transferring all the funds back to the people, and they couldn't understand why they should lose money for something that wasn't their fault. And that was one big challenge. So even though maybe uh, your terms and conditions says that if you cancel your tour, you lose so-and-so -so amount of money or this percentage amount of money, the challenge now was how, what percentage were you going to take off? And was it even realistic to take every, uh, to even take uh, the percentage off? And it, it was, we had to go back and forth and back and forth. And we decided that, okay, uh, let's do just a bank transfer, which is way less than uh, the percentage that you lose for canceling your tour. And obviously people weren't happy with that. And I'm looking at the number of tourists that, uh, the number of groups that I had to do that. And that was going to be like a lot of us, a lot of money that we were going to lose. Looking from experience with Ebola, we knew that this was going to take about two to three years, the industry, for it, before it recovers. Yes, Ebola took almost three years for the industry in West Africa to recover. For this being this big, for COVID being this big, we knew that it's going to be this, uh, probably two plus years. And we weren't going to make any income in that two years. And that, so what we have saved is what we were going to depend on for the next two years. Then, you know, one thing uh, that like have the resilience, like to keep going, first of all, you have to, love this business. I know people like the moment a uh, crisis hits in the travel industry, they just move on to something else. When you love the travel industry, you can't just move. It's difficult. People tell me, well, why don't you look for something else? Yes, I probably might be doing something else on the side, but this traveling uh, industry is, is something I eat, I breathe, 
I live for it. I love it. So it was difficult. Like, I can't leave it. So it's been like, I've been at it for this whole year. And uh, like I was saying, because I love to uh, work all the time, doing nothing for a year has been difficult, but she treats have been like, you've come through for us. And I love it because I was just, yesterday I was going back and looking at um, the number of trips from communications to legal matters to uh, how to run the business financial management to social media marketing to digital marketing. It's been, it's it's like it's worked my brain and probably even worked it more than me picking people up at the airport or booking hotels or uh, uh, going on a trip and a, 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 a vehicle breaking down on the way. I, she trades are like sustainable. And I've learned so much and I realized that um, you can be in a crisis, but you can pick up, within that crisis, you can pick up a lot of knowledge that after the crisis, you can use and use them very well and probably do better um, than when even the crisis hits. Mm-hmm. And that is one thing that I have loved uh, working with She Treats. And it's been, it's been helpful. And now let me talk to Angela and ask about, you know, talking of uh, ch- changes and adaptive strategies for tourism enterprises, what role do you plan to play or contribute in the changing world of, tra- of travel? Sustainability is not just about the planet or profit. Key feature is also looking at the people. And I know, Angela, you're so, so passionate about the people, you know. How are you impacting the people in your HR? You know, please share with us a little bit more on this, Angela. Thanks, Phyllis. Um, just um, thinking of what you're saying in terms of um, the HR. Most of the times when we talk about sustainability, people consider the three Ps, but we often forget about one P, which is the people. And if you look at the statistics we were looking at before, it also means that the people have been impacted the most. Yeah, um, just listening to Nas giving her story and saying she had to send away somebody who had just recently started working. Yeah, and this case has been replicated all over the world. Yeah, so it gives us an opportunity. I've always said we need to explore the opportunities that the threat of COVID 19 presented to us. Yeah, number one is that all businesses and destinations were reduced to startups. Yeah. Anybody starting tourism business now and anybody who had started it 20 years ago are almost in the same boat. The difference is that one is more experienced. Yeah, You see how now said because there was Ebola, uh, they could put, you know, this, you can look at the scenario and see it's a health problem related. We have been here before, so we are expecting two to three years. Yeah. So in terms of what people should do, again, I I keep insisting is that we need to start to strategically plan, yeah, develop synergies that work across all our departments and also all all, all the various functions in the tourism sector. Yeah. One thing we've seen is that SDG number 17 has managed to keep most of these tourism businesses together through partnerships. Yeah. So besides um, seeing, you know, taking care of your HR, you know, training them as she trades has been doing with them, um, you know, the women entrepreneurs, there's, there's that little that we need to do to rebalance, yeah? We need to take corrective strategies into our plans and also consider sectors that we didn't work with previously and see which components can actually make us stronger. And one of these components that has also been highlighted, especially by the UNWTO, is the cultural component, yeah? And I also want to consider the creative industries because these are sectors that involve and engage the people, yeah? That P we are talking about that is usually, you know, miss. Let me, I don't want to say misused, but, um, you know, the P that is usually ignored. Yeah. 
Over to you. Oh, thank you, Angela. I thought you were continuing because you have all wonderful things to say. So as we come to a close, and thank you so much for those insights, our, I call you my educator, our educator in tourism, Miss, Miss Angela. As we come to close this session, um, ITB now, here we are, it's a virtual world. We are doing this seated from Kenya, Kenya, um, you know, Geneva, uh, you know, I think there's someone in Berlin and Ghana. Here we are, this is the new world. What one word of advice would you tell the community that you're most passionate about. If it's women in business, then speak into it. If it's if it's the international, you know, communities that are supporting women, feel free to speak into it. What and not just one word, just a sentence. What what would be like a sentence just to leave us with all the you know uh, sh the stories that you've shared and the education you've shared? Just leave us with one sentence. What would that be? Take it away. Thanks, okay, Angela. You can uh, you can okay, go first, Angela. Angela. All right, thanks, Phyllis. Um, my one sentence would actually be, when we talk about building uh, better in tourism, I want us to include building better and right, yeah? Because we can build again, but maybe we won't build it right, yeah? One thing that has continuously emerged now is that sustainability represents a journey of continuous impacts and alternatives which result to a balance, yeah? But it's also about us living a, a better place than we found when we're practicing our tourism. So if it is in your HR that you suffered the most, consider what can I do to make it better? In terms of environment, yeah? Continuously, we hear of the climate um, the challenge or climate emergency, yeah? What can we do to contribute? So for me, I think the word really is how can we build better, but also build right? Wow, really? thank you so much. Thank you, building right. Not just building better, but making sure it's right. Thank you, thank you, Angela. Over to you now. Yes, um, just to um, emphasize what she said, like um, right now we all like are a startup and uh, we all like have been reduced to being a startup. And then, but we have the experience, so we shouldn't behave like a startup. Um, we should like do it better and do it right because we have the experience and the knowledge from previous uh, years uh, to work with this. Because it's very easy for us to go from this pandemic to uh, a, a messy um, situation uh, because uh, everybody is like, um, maybe if, if the economic uh, matters will let you start cutting corners and things, but no, um, we have had a hard time but when we start, we should do it very right and do it very well. Excellent. Thank you. So all, all are agreeing that it's like, it's a restart button. But this restart button, let's not waste it. For those who are starting out for the first time, build it right. For those who have 20 years experience like now, you know, uh, do it so right that you are set to really benefit and teach, take on people, you know, the, the perhaps the, start, the ones who are really starting up and really build sustainability into whatever you're doing. Thank you very much uh, for such an intriguing talk. We do know that from what you've shared now and from what you've shared, Angela, that definitely tourism is going to come back. Most people are currently feeling almost claustrophobic, like, oh, I just want to go out and get some sunshine in, in Malindi or, you know, go and get some freeze in Geneva, <laughs> although I know it's getting sunny now. But just I know that tourism has a better place to go to, and we are glad that we know from what you've told us, there is a better place to go to. We will build back better, and not just better, but we will back, build back better and right. So we've heard from uh, ITB now, we've heard from government, we've heard from one woman entrepreneur in the tourism industry, and also we've heard from a tourism sustainability expert. 
In closing, I'd like to ask you, Ms. Cook Hamilton, where do you see opportunities and what can international organizations such as ITC do to continue to support women in tourism? Well, thank you for this once again. Let me take my remaining few minutes to focus on the potential of digital solutions for women in tourism. The uptake of digital solutions by women is higher in the travel and tourism industry than in any other industry. It is now that we need to invest in women's ability to take advantage of those opportunities. Therefore, it's vital to support women-owned or led companies in tourism weather COVID-19. This is going to be critical for us in terms of recovery. A recent survey conducted by ITC She Trades Commonwealth Project identified access to finance, advocacy towards the government, and access to digital opportunities as the areas in greatest need of support for the recovery. So that's three A's. We've been working with tourism associations and women-led enterprises directly to provide training on new innovative business models and digital literacy, especially in digital marketing and e-commerce, which of course allows them to reach new customers. This is against the backdrop of a shift from the international market to the regional and domestic markets. Nonetheless, it's important to ensure that women in tourism are forward-looking and seek ways to stay engaged with the international markets through digitalization. To restore the international competitiveness of women in tourism, maintain their market confidence, and keep them connected to customers, ITC supports participation in virtual trade fairs such as ITB Now, our recently launched She Trades Digital Forum, which connected 1,000 women-owned businesses in Nigeria, Bangladesh, Ghana, and Kenya, led to 750 B2B meetings and generated $800,000 in business leads. Through this, we have seen that women in tourism are keen on improving their digital skills and are readily adopting new types of technologies. Partnerships are also critical to the upscaling of support to women in tourism and the sector as a whole. Increasing the capacity of tourism associations to respond to the crisis has been an important approach for ITC to deepen and expand impact. Recently, we have provided training to four tourism associations on our She Trades Crisis Management Toolkit and also trained trainers on digital marketing. Our partners in Kenya and Ghana have done an excellent job in increasing the digital skills of over 120 female members. And so this is an important element in women tourism building back better. So we're very, very happy with that outcome. And I thank you for the opportunity to address you today. Thank you very much for that. And so ladies and gentlemen, there we have it. Will tourism recover? Yes, it will. How fast will it recover? When will it recover? It's recovering, it's recovering daily, and there is much to do between now and full recovery. We now have different perspectives from what service providers, travelers, other stakeholders should be engaged in. As we begin to recover and build back better, and I dare say build back right, we will do it together. Asanteni Sana, which means thank you very much for your kind attention. And let us continue to engage on the ITB Now platform, hoping that we can meet in person next year. All the best, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.